I'm Rod, and I'm a research scientist at Google Research's Language Team. And I'm Neil, a research scientist on Google Research's Brain Team. In this episode of Research Bytes, we will learn how teams across Google Research work together to develop Parley, or the Pathways Language and Image Model as a scalable, multilingual approach to joint language and vision modeling. In this video, you'll learn about what our challenges were, what we did, how we did it, what we observed, and finally, what comes next in our research. Let's get started. In recent years, we've seen deep learning show tremendous progress in vision tasks and in language tasks. These advances unlock even more opportunities and we can really see interesting things happen when we combine vision and language and learn from both of them together. For example, imagine seeing this image and wanting to learn what meat do we get from these animals? If you try to break down the steps needed to answer this question, you'll find that you have to first figure out what's in the picture. It looks like a hilly landscape with a bunch of cows on it. Then you need to understand the question and identify the animals referenced in the picture. It looks like there is only one type of animal since they are all cows. You also need to determine the right answer to the question, what meat do we get from cows? Cow meat is called beef. And finally, you need to generate the right answer for the original question. What meat do we get from these animals? Correct answer, beef. So this is what it would look like for English. Now, Imagine you need to give that answer in another language, perhaps because your friend does not speak English. Well, then you'd need an additional step in which you'd have to conceptually map that answer to the correct word or phrase in another language. For instance, carne de res in Spanish. When we combine vision and language learning, we can ask the model questions like this in natural language, instead of having to decompose them explicitly in a series of single modality steps, like I just described. Vision question answering like this is just one example of a task that combines vision and language. And there are many other such tasks, like image captioning and scene text understanding. One of the key challenges that guided us in taking this research direction is that it appeared that language models and vision models behaved somewhat differently with respect to scale. On one hand, language models continue to show improvements with scale up to models that have 500 billion parameters. While on the other hand, vision models, specifically vision transformers, did not seem to improve beyond 1 billion parameters. We didn't quite believe this to be the whole story, so we started to investigate this more closely. We started out with two hypotheses. First, that larger vision models may actually be quantitatively better but many of the existing metrics and benchmarks may not have been challenging enough to reveal this. And second, that combining these larger vision models with Google's best performing language models could allow us to tackle difficult vision and language tasks. So with this in mind, we set out to build a single model that could perform various tasks on images, text, and images and text together, which we call the Pathways Language and in Image Model, or PALI. As you can see, this model can handle all of these tasks with the same interface that takes image and text inputs and returns a text output. Because the output of the model is in the form of open vocabulary text, we can't enumerate all the right answers in advance, which is common for many vision tasks. So although this single interface keeps the model more general, it's also more difficult to work with. And if that wasn't enough of a challenge, we also wanted Pali to do all of this in at least 100 languages. In order to accomplish this, we realized that we need to first train a very large vision model, then connect it to an advanced language model, and then train these two components together as part of a larger multimodal model so they would learn to communicate with each other. We needed to build a few things to make this happen. First, we needed to define new benchmark tasks. Current vision and language benchmarks mostly targeted the English language. To be able to measure Polly's performance across multiple languages, we needed to build and publish new benchmarks, such as CrossModel 3600 for image captioning in 36 languages, and Maxim for visual question answering, which covers seven languages. 
Second, we needed to train the largest vision transformer model to date. Our team doubled the size of the previous largest model and trained with E, where E stands for enormous, to integrate as Polly's visual component. Next, we needed to build a new multilingual multi-signal training set. The result of this is Webly, the largest image language training dataset to date for us, at around 10 billion image text pairs and covering 109 languages. After all this, we created a large and general mix of pre-training tasks, formulated as a unified API, namely input image and text going into output text. Finally, we brought everything together with lots of plumbing by using JAX and open source Flex tools such as Flexformer and T5. The result is that we ended up with a single encoder decoder transformer model. The encoder takes inputs of two types or modalities, text words, which we would usually call prompts, and visual words, which are just vectors from the vision transformer that represent the content of the input image in a format that the transformer encoder can digest. The decoder generates text in the language specified by the prompt. We tested Pali on various vision language benchmarks and observed some interesting results. First, the model performed very well on many vision and language tasks, and in particular on visual question answering, captioning, and visual text QA tasks. In this first example, we have a captioning task. The model needs to identify the salient objects in the image, the car on the pole, and the clues about the way they are arranged in order to describe the scene. And here we see another example of combining the ability to do visual recognition, here recognition of the bird, with world knowledge, the fact that birds are evolutionary descendants of dinosaurs, and therefore the right answer to the question is dinosaur. This third example shows the ability of the model to read. Here, there are multiple pieces of text on the stadium banners. Based on the question, the model can infer the pattern of text that it should be looking for in order to return the correct answer. A second interesting result is that languages that are less represented in the training data see relatively large benefits from scale. For example, for the language code IW, the original ISO code for Hebrew, used before HG, we see performance improve almost four times when we scale the model. We were excited to see that the larger model achieves this using a relatively small fraction of the training data. While this is a special case, we saw large gains for all languages that are less frequent on the web and therefore less represented in the training data. However, although we're happy to see these results, we recognize that there's still some way to go for the performance in some of the other languages. Third, we learned that balancing the language and image components by adding a few more vision parameters goes a long way. Pali 3B, in blue, uses relatively small language and vision components, around 2 billion and 1 billion parameters respectively. This model is the baseline and is normalized to a score of zero. Pali 15B, in red, has 2 billion vision parameters and many more language parameters, 13 billion. And Pali 17B, in gold, has a larger vision component with 4 billion vision parameters and the same 13 billion language parameters. Compared to Pali 3B, Pali 15B with its much larger language model performs substantially better. More interesting still, while Pali 17B only has 13% more parameters than Pali 15B in total, the larger vision component results in significantly better performance as seen in the improvements indicated by the gold solid bars. And on top of that, we can see that training with images at high resolution adds another boost in performance. These results showed us that vision models do benefit from scale, just like language models, and we were able to validate our hypothesis that it was a matter of having the right benchmarks in order to showcase this. We're excited to see the performance improvements from scaling both vision and language components of Poly, and we hope this works offer a roadmap for future research in scaling language and vision models. We're looking forward to testing how far can we push Poly's performance in future work. More broadly, 
we're interested in three big research directions. One, general unification of tasks into a single model by growing the model to handle more tasks in more modalities, for instance, video. Two, the reuse of previously trained models by studying modularity, recycling, and reuse of components to accelerate progress of new AI models and reduce their training costs. And three, scale. Clearly, the experiments done in this work do not represent the end story with respect to scale. With respect to how even larger models, say 10 times or even 100 times larger, could impact our ability to do even better on these and other tasks. To learn more about this work, please check out the links in the description below. And if you found this video interesting, please share it and don't forget to subscribe to the Google Research YouTube channel.